Kitco News Outlook 2024 is brought to you by iTrust Capital. Buy and sell crypto, gold and silver with your IRA. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Safran and this is Kitco News. Now today, we focus on the precious metals market, exploring the distinct trends of gold and silver, with central banks around the world navigating inflationary challenges and geopolitical uncertainties looming, gold and silver remain key assets for investors. And joining us is Jim Wyckoff, Kitco's technical senior analyst to provide expert insight into the current trends and the future prospects of the markets. Jim, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Jeremy, and welcome to Kitco. I appreciate it. I was saying to the crew and, and to you, it's it's like I go to bed and I see your name on your reports. And when I wake up, it's the same in my inbox. So it's almost as though I know you. <laughs> so listen, let's uh, let's focus a little bit on gold here. Now, we've seen the price remaining steady around the 2025 mark recently. I'm curious if you can elaborate a little bit, though, on the economic and political factors currently influencing those gold prices. Sure, Jeremy. Well, the overriding factor the past uh, oh past week has been the uh, surprisingly dovish stance taken by the U.S. Federal Reserve at last week's FOMC meeting. That was a significantly bullish element for the uh, gold and silver markets, also the raw commodity markets. Uh, it put some risk on back to the general marketplace. What it suggests is that uh, with U.S. lowering interest rates, the major economies of the world are probably going to likely do the same or at least pause on hiking rates. Uh, that that augurs for more demand, better demand for gold and silver and other raw commodities because uh, businesses and consumers are not having to deal with higher interest rates, higher borrowing costs. Yeah, you know, I mentioned that some of the uh, some of the officials from the Fed have been kind of backpedaling a little bit about all this enthusiasm towards rate cuts. I'm curious, were you surprised by this latest data that we saw? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was surprised by the FOMC results. I mean, uh, the marketplace had fully expected what we call a uh, a hawkish pause, whereby they left interest rates unchanged, but sounded their rhetoric sounded hawkish. Well. They had a pause, but the uh, the Fed was dovish on their monetary policy, and that uh, immediately rallied the gold and silver markets as well as the stock market. Uh, Treasury yields fell, uh, so it was a, a bullish all around scenario for many markets. Yeah, you know, I'm curious. I mean, you you remain bullish on gold, and I want to talk a little bit about that because the predictions of gold prices remain strong, obviously into 2024. So I'm curious, though, as investors look for some insight here, how do investors adjust their strategy in light of your projections? Well, uh, I've been saying for quite some time that, uh, you know, commodity markets are highly cyclical. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at a long term chart and say that, you know, gold and other markets go through periods of boom and bust. Well, we're in kind of a boom cycle right now in the gold market. We just hit a record high a few weeks ago. Um, The path of least resistance in a price uptrend is sideways to higher, and I think that's going to continue to be the case. The fact that the Fed had some easier monetary policy rhetoric only added to the bullish uh, uh, fuel that uh, is probably going to propel gold and silver prices higher here uh, in the coming months. Now, over the near term, we we may see some choppy and sideways uh, trading, but uh, longer term, I'm bullish gold and silver and uh, look for even higher prices than the record high scored recently in gold. I look for silver to, in 2024, potentially reach uh, $30 an hour. Wow. Wow. $30. Yeah, before I pivot into go- into silver, because I have quite a bit to discuss there, I'm curious here. You know, we talked a little bit about the Fed, their, their standpoint and how they're fairly dovish. I want to get into the intricacies of how this in- affects gold prices. Explain that to the audience a little bit and maybe what it might signal for the future market movements. Yeah, sure. Uh, on a daily basis, generally, the gold market trades in an inverse fashion with the U.S. dollar index. Mm-hmm. When the Fed came out with this uh, dovish rhetoric, rhetoric last week, the U.S. dollar index automatically sold off real, you know, sharply and, and just saw follow through selling the, the next couple of days and hit a 4.5 month low last week. That uh, immediately was a bullish element for the gold market uh, from that perspective. But also, as I mentioned, the 
easier monetary policies of the policy of the Federal Reserve and possibly of the European Central Bank and other central banks, that means there's going to be better consumer confidence. Better consumer confidence because of lower borrowing costs means better consumer demand for raw commodities, including the metals markets. The outlier or the uh, flying the ointment may be in the coming months if China's economy continues to uh, list and, and show uh, further economic weakness like it has the past uh, few months. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. But if China's economy uh, gets in some serious trouble, the property sector already uh, is, is in some trouble. That China's got some debt problems. If their economy lists further, then that could be the element that, uh, you know, prevents gold from uh, trending significantly higher. Yeah, we just saw China inject a little bit of stimulus into their economy as too. When do you see the effect of this kind of playing out? Well, the markets are always front runners. So when those announcements are made, even though the effect of the easing of monetary policy may not come for a while down the road, the markets automatically sense that that announcement is uh, going to have a certain impact at a certain date and, and factor that into market prices. So it's it's pretty immediate when China makes these announcements or makes these moves. Of course, you got to see what the the real data is down the road, but uh, markets do a pretty good job of factoring in uh, expected uh, economic developments once they're announced. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we live in a world where we see a lot of major geopolitical tensions and shifts. That was no, you know, we saw a lot of that this year, uh, maybe some potentially this year. And I'm curious if we do see some economic shifts or some geopolitical problems here, what impact does that usually have on the price of gold? Well, let's talk geopolitics first. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a couple of uh, developments or a couple of things going on. We've got the Russia-Ukraine war. We've got the Israel-Hamas war. Um, the Russia-Ukraine war has kind of dragged on for quite some time now, but there, there's always the chance that uh, there could be a surprise escalation that would drive safe haven demand for gold. Same way with the Israel, uh, Israeli-Hamas war. There's, uh, there, there may be another shoe to drop. There, there could be involvement with the U.S. Just uh, this week, the Red Sea shipping lanes have been uh, impacted and, and, and ships, ships are avoiding those th that lane because of the Houthi uh, missile attacks. So mm -hmm. those are all elements that, that could escalate quickly and drive uh, better safe haven demand for gold. And that would uh, push prices sharply higher in a hurry, probably to new record highs. Same goes with silver. Silver is going to follow. Okay, so with gold having trading significantly over 2000 for a significant period in most of 2023, uh, what are your thoughts on this price base? Uh, what's the future trajectory here? Well, the path of least resistance, as I said, is sideways to higher. I'm going to look at my chart right now. Uh, you know, we, we've got to get above 2100. That is uh, chart resistance on the near term basis. Then we've got the all time high of 21, just above 2150. So those are the near-term resistance levels, but if we give get above uh, 2150, then uh, bigger price gains are possible in a shorter period of time. And and uh, you know, but again, gold is cyclical. You know, if we do hit a new record high, uh, we could see prices correct back over a period of weeks or months. You know, back down to the you know 2000 level before embarking on a maybe a future uptrend. So all one has to do is look at a long-term commodity chart, long-term gold mark, gold chart, and see that uh, the prices are volatile and they have been and are going to continue to be. So is the buy on the crash strategy in light of those predictions, is, is that still accurate here? Is that still the approach? Well, we call it in the industry, we buy the dips. Uh, mm. So if, yes, right now the the market's in a bullish technical posture. Any price pullbacks in gold are viewed as as buying the dip or buying opportunities, bargain buying opportunities by bullish traders. So that's okay. uh, that's likely going to continue to be the case. Yeah, let's switch over here a little bit, Jim, to uh, to silver. As we know, silver markets often operate under different influences compared to gold. What are some of the key economic drivers for silver right now, and how do they differ from gold? Well, actually, gold and silver t tend to trade in tandem. They they mm -hmm. do they do follow. Uh, the same fundamentals because silver is a poor man's gold. Uh, when when gold starts to rally, 
Silver can uh, follow along. Sometimes silver will lead. Silver is a more important industrial metal, arguably, than gold. So uh, in better economic times, uh, economic growth times, uh, silver may outpace gold. But generally, they track each other. Silver is still a, a safe haven investment. But uh, on, on days when there's keen geopolitical and uncertainty in the marketplace, the, the silver market tends to underperform and gold, gold outperforms. Yeah, you know, we just had last week the CEO of Wheat and Precious Metals on the show, Randy Smallwood, and he was talking about how his opinion has kind of pivoted a little bit from silver, or excuse me, from gold into silver. He thinks silver will take over for 2024. And you were just mentioning the role in the industrial use here. Uh, in your view, what role will that play? And our consumer is consumer demand for silver uh, is that going to be pretty pretty high this year? I would suspect. Well, I'm not an expert on the supply and demand, uh, the specific uh, uses and, and demand from uh, from industry for silver. I'm more of a price and, and charts guy and, and macro fundamentals guy. But uh, generally speaking, stronger economies are going to mean stronger demand for silver and, and other raw commodities. So as we look at these likely easier monetary policies uh, for the central banks in 2024, that's going to that's going to funnel into uh, better demand for uh, for silver and also uh, the other the, the other metals markets and raw commodities. One thing we need to keep a close eye on, Jeremy, in the coming weeks and months is the trajectory of the crude oil market. Crude mm -hmm. oil is uh, the leader of the raw commodity sector. Crude oil prices right now are trending down. If crude oil prices continue to trend down in the coming weeks and months, that's not my bias, but if they do, then rallies in most commodities are going to be limited, including the metals market. So uh, we've got to see uh, crude oil uh, prices stabilize and, and start to trend sideways to higher. And my bias is that will be the case uh, in the coming uh, weeks or a few months. Uh, we've got to see crude oil rebound and start to trend higher again if we're going to see some sustained uh, price strength and, and solid rallies in the raw commodities, including the metals. Yeah, you know, I'm curious on the oil side, what's been pushing that? I mean, you just mentioned we got the Red Sea problems. There's some tankers that are avoiding the area. We got OPEC. We got this Russia crisis. Uh, talk a little bit about what's happening on the oil side of things. Well, the main thing impacting oil right now or the past few weeks has been the U.S. has been, been pumping a near record amount of crude oil. And uh, that that's, I'm not saying it's flooded the market, but it certainly has depressed prices. Uh, the Red Sea situation or the Middle East situation is maybe a bullish wild card. However, you know, surprisingly, the early October uh, Hamas raid on Israel and the, and the, you know, the shock that that created for at least a while really didn't do a whole lot of lasting uh, bullish impact for the gold or for the crude oil market. So actually crude oil prices have been trending lower the past few weeks. So uh, we, we need to watch that situation closely. Russia is going to be a big player. They they're, they're they've got some sanctions against them, but uh, they 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 appear to be avoiding them and still putting uh, crude oil out onto the world market. Yeah, yeah, and the U.S. as well trying to fill up those tanks again. Uh, let's talk a little bit and shift over to the technical indicators, like the 14-day RSI. Uh, how do you anticipate these will behave for the precious metals sector in the upcoming year? Well, I don't. Uh, I follow price trend. Price trend mm -hmm. is my paramount indicator, and and I think most uh, industry veterans look at the price trend either on a daily chart, a weekly chart, or a monthly chart, and that's their best determinant of of where prices are going to go. Now, if you're a shorter term trader, uh, an active day trader, or you know trade several times a week, you're going to want to look at those indicators, those oscillators like the RSI and the stochastics. But for the longer term, for the for the buy and hold guys, you're going to want to look at those uh, charts and, and determine price trend. So heading into the new year, we've got gold prices in a, in a solid uptrend on, on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts. Same goes with silver. So uh, those are bullish elements, uh, technical elements that augur for uh, the speculators, the chart-based guys, uh, continuing to play the long side of gold and silver in the coming weeks and months. 
Yeah, and I mean, long term, it looks pretty good. I'm curious, you talked a little bit about those short term traders that, you know, a little bit of a different play here. But in the context of price movements in market volatility, how should investors be hedging against the risk? How do investors manage that right now? Well, there's several ways to hedge risk. You can do it with options. You can, uh, uh, you know, have have spread strategies. But uh, speaking of shorter term traders, um, I think a lot of our Kitco readers have uh, been reading or looking at. I put out a daily price item that has a five minute bar chart on gold and, and gives daily buy and sell signals uh, for the more active traders on uh on, on the on that five minute chart, it'll, it'll have a line that says buy and a line that says sell. Basically, it's a uh, when when gold pushes above a, a short term resistance level, that's a buy signal. Drops below a short term support level, that's a sell signal. And it's been working working pretty good here the past uh, uh, few months. Yeah, you know, I'm curious though. Looking at an outlook for 2024, this first six months into it, Jim, uh, what's some guidance here? What could what should we be telling our viewers and our readers? Well, you got to keep watching the Federal Reserve, yeah. uh, the central banks. Uh, you know the old saying: you don't fight the Fed. We're gonna we're gonna be watching inflation. Uh, it, inflation has cooled globally the past uh, several months. If that continues to be the case, central banks are going to be able to lean easy. That's going to loosen up the financial system with more liquidity, and that's that's good. that's going to be bullish for the raw commodities. It's going to be bullish for the stock market. Uh, the the bugaboo could be. Uh, that that throws water on a on my bullish scenario could be a, a an unexpected resurgence of inflation, uh, or like I said, maybe the Chinese economy get getting into a more serious situation with its debt problem. So inflation and uh, China uh, could be uh, bearish elements uh, in in 2024. We'll just have to see how that plays out. Yeah, absolutely. And we will be seeing how that plays out and hopefully have you on much, much more. Jim, thanks for joining us today. All right, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks again to our viewers for joining us. For more, please download our Kit Code app. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest. I'm Jeremy Safran, and we'll see you next time. Kitco News Outlook 2024 is brought to you by iTrust Capital. Buy and sell crypto, gold and silver with your IRA.